Guyana is making more lands and resources available for mineral production and investments in the natural resources sector. These initiatives are being pursued in keeping with the country's commitment to protect the environment. The focus of this year's budget, as we've heard outlined by our able Minister of Finance and many colleagues who have spoken, even some of the colleagues on the other side have recognized some of the merits therein, is about creating opportunities for our people. And I wish to say, not only creating opportunities for people, but creating opportunities for all our people. The 2014 budget, as presented by our minister, and representing the vision of our president and our government, is also about transforming our country, transforming our economy, and ensuring that our economy is resilient, not only for national circumstances, but also resilient in terms of dealing with what we can say unpredictable international developments. And so, Mr. Speaker, the 2014 budget is about positioning and also preparing Guyana. Preparing Guyana not only for today, but also positioning Guyana for sometimes the unknown and the known tomorrow. And I want to, Mr. Speaker, on this note, to single out our small and medium-scale miners who have created history, who have created history in this land. And I want all of us in this National Assembly to recognize their performance, whereby they've been able to produce and declare in excess of 481,000 ounces. And this is the first time we've done so, even in the absence of a large gold mine. Yeah. The last time we came close to that is when we had the Omai oh gold mines in operation. And then when we had the combined production in this regard. But this is the first time, Mr. Speaker, that we've seen our small and medium scale miners making use of the opportunity and rising to the challenge and certainly presenting our country with enormous opportunities. Last year, if we look in terms of diamond, we've seen our declaration for diamond has increased by an excess of 55%. And we can also, if we move down in terms of the mining and quarrying sector, in terms of quarrying, we've seen quarry production, Mr. Speaker, has increased by as much as 40%. This speaks to the, not only the public works projects that are taking place, but it also speaks to the dynamic private construction sector that is taking place in our economy. And Mr. Speaker, if you look at the forestry sector too, we've seen an increase, Mr. Speaker, of close to 10%. And that increase, Mr. Speaker, has taken place particularly in terms of the value-added sector, because we've always recognized that in long term, and ensuring the development of our forestry resources. It is not only about the extraction of logs and the exports of logs, but also ensuring that in our country that we have maximum value. And in fact, last year, Mr. Speaker, 
we saw a decrease in log export of in excess of 12%, an increase, but also for the same period, an increase of in excess of 30% of value added product. And that's, again, Mr. Speaker, speak to an industry that is responding and responding to the opportunities. We've recognized the challenges that we've had with bauxite, particularly with the global market situation. But that did not daunt the two major companies. And that is why last year they've invested in excess of 17 million US dollars. And this year, Mr. Speaker, they're poised to increase and even diversify their production and their export. We have resurrected we have resurrected the bauxite industry. We have resurrected the bauxite industry. And we have brought communities that were abandoned. Communities, be it in Region 10, in Linden, Aichuni, or up the Burbis River, Kokwani, Araima, Hururu. We have brought where there was a feeling of hopelessness when persons after the devastation that came about to the closure of Bauxite then, we revived hope. And we were able to attract foreign investment and restarted and rejuvenated the Bauxite industries, the Linden Bauxite as well as the Burbis River Bauxite. And Mr. Speaker, today we can boast of both companies, notwithstanding a very unpredictable in the world bauxite situation, if we look at world bauxite prices, especially for metallurgical grade bauxite, calcine grade bauxite, that particularly that we export, and we're no longer a monopoly for the information of the honorable members. We're no longer a monopoly because China has now lifted its um, export restriction and calcine grade bauxite, so we, there's competition now. And uh, notwithstanding these realities, Mr. Speaker, the Guyana bauxite industry, the Guyanese bauxite industry continues to be one in which there has been considerable progress. And this year, there's poise for expansion. The question was asked by one of the honorable members about Hururu and, and the suggestion that this investment has taken advantage of an Amerindian community in the Burbese River. And Mr. S Mr. Speaker, several honorable members here would recall that in an appearance before the Natural Resources Sectoral Committee, a request was made of me to table all the documentations as it pertains to that particular arrangement as it pertains to the investment that was taking place. And I wish to report that I have submitted same and it will show very clearly the deliberate efforts made by the Ministry of Amerindian Affairs working with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment and the companies, but very, 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 very critically, the role played by the communities that ensuring that at the end of the day, that the best deal, the best arrangement was had for that community. And the, the documents are there, it's public, and I've already tabled this to the Natural Resources Subcommittee. So let us not get away that these investments are cheating, robbing, and denying people of opportunity. In fact, it's the opposite. They are providing opportunities and protecting and enriching and enshrining and expanding the rights and opportunities of people in those communities, Mr. Speaker. Boasting some 75% pristine rainforest, Guyana is home to more than 8,000 species of plants, mammals, birds, fishes, reptiles and amphibians, and countless invertebrates.
It is about ensuring that we maximize the opportunities within the natural capital. And that I speak to is the natural resources and environment sector. And the Honorable Member, Dr. Rupert Rupnarain, last night in his presentation, posed a number of questions, and very important questions. These questions certainly, Mr. Speaker, speak to some of the current issues which we are confronting and which we must confront collectively if we are going to move the natural resources of which we call the extractive industry in our country forward. Speak to the issue of how it is, can we minimize the impact of the expanding mining sector, particularly gold. And Mr. Speaker, if you look at the programs and initiatives that we've launched in terms of clean and new technology, one, we are now a signatory to the Minmata Convention, that is for the reduction and eventual elimination of the use of mercury, not only in mining, but in other activities, but because of its prominent role and the use of mercury traditionally for recovery in the mining sector, we have committed internationally to transition out from the use of mercury. And Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to report to this National Assembly that since the last budget presentation, we are in fact making steady and we are in fact making, in a way, hurried progress in along this direction. At the end of last year, we were able to announce a $1 billion program to assist the industry in moving away from mercury. And just recently, Mr. Speaker, in discussions with the Guyana Gold and Diamond Miners Association, we have come to a, an arrangement whereby we will be approaching financial institutions in terms of managing this facility, but also looking at a component of this resource in terms of us learning from our past efforts in ensuring that the right and the appropriate technology to our geology, to our geological reality and conditions that these technology have brought. And so, Mr. Speaker, in response to that particular concern and question, we have the commitment, we have the buy-in of the sector, we have the buy-in of all stakeholders in moving in this, in this um, area. And the issue of diversification, because we don't only want the mining sector to be only focused on gold. And we've started work in terms of diversification, looking at other minerals. And, and that issue, Mr. Speaker, is one again in which we require collective resolve, and which we do not hope that we will blow hot and cold on. And last year, Mr. Speaker, you would have been or earlier this year, you would have been aware of the debate, the public debate on the Mori project and the granting of the PGGS in the New River area, Mr. Speaker. And much has been said about that. But Mr. Speaker, the underlying objective of that and other efforts is for us to understand what it is we have, the resources that we have, and the focus of that particular PGGS or the focus of that particular effort was for us to develop, as it were, rare earth elements, which in fact, Mr. Speaker, is a very, very scarce com um, commodity. I always encourage your passengers not to throw garbage out of the window. Stop littering. Do the right thing.
Regarding Guyana gold fields, Mr. Speaker, it is expected that towards the end of this year, and already much activities have started, close to 200 million US dollars have already been invested, and close to about 200 Guyanese are already employed, and very soon a number of more individuals will be employed in terms of construction and other activities for this very, very large um, gold mining operation. If we look in terms of ETK Sand Springs 2, another large mining project, much progress has been made and, they, and again all, this investment will be in excess of 350 million US dollars, Mr. Speaker, and sometime next year, the, they're, they're still finalizing the time schedule and I don't want to commit the company nor commit myself, but during the course of 2015 again, there will be much significant development in terms of the realization of that large-scale mining. And, Mr. Speaker, there's been another progress, rapid development, and some of, some of our colleagues here would have noticed in the newspapers today. One of, one of the other investors that we've had out of Australia, Troy Resources, Mr. Speaker, in terms of developing the Karuni project, already that project will see the employment of close to 300 Guyanese in the short term, immediately in terms of the construction. And like the other gold, large gold projects, we'll see a minimum coming to the, gov to the state, as it were, directly of in excess of 25 million US dollars per annum in revenue and indirectly that goes all the way up to 200 million US per annum. And these, Mr. Speaker, these particular investments, they speak directly in terms of providing opportunities, but also in taking the sector forward in this regard. Large and medium scale miners, they will have what you call an investment development agreement, whereby they're provided with various forms of concessions, duty free in terms of machinery, equipment, spares, and so forth. And for the small and medium scale operators who may not have an idea, they themselves through a process working with the GGMC would be qualified in terms for exemption for ATV, excavators, bulldozers, and other machinery that are used within the mining in industry, including mercury free technology in, in this regard. And, various spares and equipment that are necessary. These are the types of invest, um, incentives. In fact, if we look at last year, concessions granted to small operators, small miners. There are 150 excavators, six tractors, 190 ATVs, various pickups, um, number of trucks, and so forth. And currently, Ms. Mr. Speaker, I wish to report that the Minister of Finance is currently examining the appropriate regulations whereby we can provide our small miners to, because currently they qualify for single cab pickup and vehicle for transportation. But recognizing that we have female miners and we need people to be transported, not only comfortably, but safely, we are looking in terms of having double cab pickup um, and even car to qualify in, in some regards uh, for our small miners. For a number of years, especially with the boom of the mining industry, particularly gold, the GGMC working with the GGDMA, in fact, collaborate and carry out and execute a number of road maintenance and road building projects. Also, the GGMC would provide resources to the Ministry of Public Works in executing some of those programs. And so it is a collaborative effort. And we want to ensure that the miners feel the direct support too.
this singling out of Chinese investment, Indian investment, American investment, or whatever investment or African, I think, Mr. Speaker, it is unhelpful. It does not send the right signal because we live in a globalized environment. We live in an environment where, in fact, the competition to attract investment, in fact, is very, very intensive. And the fact that due to our country, due to the enabling environment that the PPP civic government has created, we've been able to attract here. And due to all the people of Ghana, I think is something positive and something that we must celebrate. The prospects of oil and gas, as we know, we have Repsol and Talau, two, com two companies in a joint venture. They are currently actively pursuing work, hoping to engage in exploration in the Kanuku block. Exxon is also in the process of making a key decision and, and in fact, is all, has already um, established its office in Guyana, again, to engage in exploration activity in the Stabrook block. CGX2 is engaged in a number of um, preparatory activities to have renewed exploration, both in the quarantine and Demerara, as well as the onshore. As you know, we had the unfortunate development whereby Anandarko, um, having one its seismic vessel forcibly um, removed um, by a Venezuelan Navy, and that itself too, I wish to report, has set back our programs in some regard. But Mr. Speaker, it points that what we require in Guyana is unity. What we require in Guyana is togetherness on this particular issue. Because I wish to refer to another issue where just recently our Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs have had to, um, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we've had to protest. And sometimes the statements that we make and the mixed signals that we send in our country, they embolden the others outside. And whereby we had to withdraw our participation in an oil and gas conference that Suriname was proposing to hold in June. And why we withdrew, they were circulating the documents and as part of the Suriname map, they had the New River Triangle area included. And Mr. Speaker, I point to that because we have to constantly and consistently and stridently take a unified stand on our territory, but also the development of our natural resources. The Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment is creating conditions for the responsible and sustainable exploitation of the country's natural resources. Operators are encouraged to mine with the environment in mind. Particular emphasis has been placed on strict environmental monitoring and enforcement. And what we have done, Mr. Speaker, in addition to collaborating with our international partners, be it CI, WWF, working with the KFWD of, of um, Germany, and other UNDP and the World Bank, and a range of other partners, We've also looked at developing our national regulatory institutions. Take, for instance, the EPA in ensuring that we boost its capacity, even the environmental division within the GGMC in ensuring that there's compliance, working with communities, particularly Amerindian communities, in terms of training environmental monitors so that we can have constant monitoring, particularly an area of particular concern in terms of water pollution and ensuring that we manage that and we do constant monitoring and we take necessary action um, if we find that, that we have a situation that requires attention.
we now have real-time satellite imagery whereby we can pinpoint, Mr. Speaker, I know I'm not supposed to be showing placards or pictures, but I just wanted, as for aid of reference, where at any one time we can track where dredges are, where there's mining activity, the specific location. We can also point to where there are hotspots of immediate deforestation. And these, this type of info, Mr. Speaker, it's very, very important because we can tell you every mining activity that is causing deforestation, there's more than 10, 10 hectares. We are building 15 more mining stations in addition to the 35 forestry stations that we have. Already four being completed. So I, I speak to that, to, to those efforts among others because it shows our commitment to Red Plus to managing. Whilst we are very much interested and we are promoting a, an expanding extractive industry, we want that to be done in a sustainable as well as in a responsible way. Check us out on the internet for this and every episode of Eldorado Shines. Just go to YouTube, search for Eldorado Shines and start watching. Or like us on Facebook and receive instant updates.